referring to this June 13, 2023, Board of Select Meetings order, following ground rules, civility, mutual respect will be maintained at all times. No personal attack attacks will be tolerated. In the event the quorum is lost, the chair will immediately call a recess to resolve the matter. Individuals wishing to speak to the subject at hand will raise their hand and for acknowledgement by the chair. Once recognized by the chair, the individual will state their name and address for the record, followed by their comments. No interruptions will be allowed except by the chair. Subsequent requests by the same individual will be acknowledged once all individuals have, the, have had the opportunity to speak on the subject. Okay, so Mr. Chair, first first thing, oh, sorry, uh, there has been a request by uh, one of the select men to move the bear baiting uh, to the top of the agenda due to a conflict. So I'll make so, that one. I'll second. Okay, I, I, okay. Eric, come on up and get you out of here so you can go coach those kids. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you guys are coming. Here. Do I? Eric French, Three Shaw Divide, here to talk about bear baiting permits. <laughs> well, we're in restrict the street. Uh, yes, sir. It's so I, I met with the Conservation Commission last night um, and we walked through the applications. There were a few concerns identified, uh, which resulted in an amended application. Um, the, the major updates were one, uh, providing GPS coordinates for each bait site, uh, which we got auto off of Google Maps software. Um, so that's included on both the map and the, the actual application. Uh, the other update is clarification of how I access the Turi Pond site walking directly from my house uh, and then the the third one was a uh, landowner restriction to remove tree stands within 10 days of the season ending uh, so all those updates have been made to the application um, and I, I think the only other request from the conservation commission was one of the questions that came up was why am i asking for permission for more bait sites that I can submit to the state. And the answer was because I, I still have to do my scouting in, in June and July to finalize where I'm actually gonna put my sites. The request from the Conservation Commission was to follow up and establish, okay, these are the sites I selected and submitted to the state so that the town knows exactly where the, the bait is being placed. Okay, I'm sorry. So you'll be back before us uh, when you select the, the final sites? So the, the plan was to submit but an email to the board, if that's okay. I, I certainly can come back, but. The GPS report, report is required on the state application? No, the, the basically uh, written instructions are required. I think the, the request was more for, because of the technology these days, it's easier to punch in coordinates into a, like a, a hiking app or something like that to, to get right to the site. So it was, perhaps a, a second set of data to make sure that the site is identified clearly. I appreciate you doing all the extra work, Eric. Um, so if anybody else doesn't have any questions, I'll make a motion that we approve the, uh, the permits for the bait wildlife on our own property. For baiting the wildlife. Subject. Uh, so you mean the revised permit? Uh, yeah, yes. Well, yes, that's what's in front of us. Uh, yeah, subject to them letting us know prior to uh, Prior to the finalization of yes. locations, I'll second that. Any additional discussion? I'd like to just make sure that they include the amendments. I don't think on the application it discusses removing the bait stand within 10 days. Or it, removing it, the it should be on there. It is? Yep. Yes. I might be looking at the wrong side. It's a hard form to follow, honestly. Um, there's a, a section towards the bottom, about two-thirds of the way down, says landowner restrictions. Perfect. Awesome. It's in bold. <laughs> that was was not me emphasizing it. It was just Adobe wasn't behaving at ten o'clock last night. So. Okay. Additional discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Thank Good luck you. tonight. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you guys accommodating me. Yeah. Oh, good, man. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you tonight. Four zero. Hey, is there uh, a chair? Uh, I'm yeah. 
Oh, 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 yeah. 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 oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go for a short recess to have our picture taken for. Oh, sir. Oh, you in the other room. <laughs> We're trying to do this for. Thank you. Is there anything special I'm going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? Do you want to share? HDMI. Do you need the HDMI cord? Because I don't know how that works with that. And do you have the camera remote for that? Yep. No, whatever is easiest for. Um, so I can send you the meeting link. And if you want to join for your laptop and then share your screen, you can do it that way. Otherwise, I don't know any other way. HDMI well, what's the Wi-Fi? Um, um, it should go right onto public. I don't see it. Oh, I wanted me to come see to see if I could find it, but I couldn't see it. So I'll go back in. Okay, Nick. Here you are. September cycle one. And there is the conference. Did you get it? I can't remember if I set it up as password or join. It doesn't matter. I'm just waiting to see what the screen is going to tell me. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to call this meeting back into session. Next thing being on the agenda. Public comment. I am seeing no hands. We have no public comment. Mike, yes. I recommend that we let uh, the recycling initiative go before the water extension progress since we've got uh, citizen volunteers here as opposed to people who are paying. Okay. All right. We have no public hearings. So we'll move on to meetings. We're having one, two, two, three meetings. <laughs> well, the only one. Numbers. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Bob, uh, I, have one request. I don't think. Oh. Mike can just authorize it. If yeah, yeah, there's been a request to move the recycling initiative so, up to uh, yes. one. <laughs> First off, thanks, guys, for all you do. Thank you for having us. Was it? I haven't seen the number. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Danielle Ruey, and I'm the secretary. And I'm Sherry Cheney. For those of you who don't know me, I've been on. I'm chairman of the committee, I guess, right now, and and I've been on the committee. Since day one, mm -hmm. we have two projects that we want to propose. 
and see if you guys are interested in. And uh, we'll take the TerraCycle one first. Question. TerraCycle is a company, it's a large international company, and it has hundreds of small recycling projects. They work, their mission is to recycle the things that are really difficult that normal recycling programs can't recycle. And um, some of the programs are very specific and some are broader. Uh, we were looking at possibly doing initially perhaps four of them, um, ones that are broad, which means any brand and that are free. And the only cost on this program then would be our buying some containers, simply to have something that was fairly nice looking. But, okay, it is this package. And the second page talks about all the awards they've won, over 200 awards. They were the 2021 Time 100 uh, uh, influential companies uh, company. Um, and the third page talks about some of the free recycling programs. I have clicked on the left a few of them that we might be interested in doing. And to sort of explain how they'd work. Um, Toms of Maine. See, these companies work with TerraCycle and um, they pay the cost and then TerraCycle um, has the program anyway. So with Toms of Maine, we could collect mouthwash bottles and caps, toothbrushes, deodorant containers and caps, soap packaging, floss containers, toothpaste tubes and caps from any brand. The Calphalon program collects metal cookware, metal-based cookware, bakeware and cutlery, nonstick aluminum, stainless steel, carbon steel, cast iron. Um, I think we all have those nonstick pans that got scratched up and we don't use anymore. They can get recycled. Go Go Squeeze is a program that does all the, I don't know if any of you have children or grandchildren that have their, it's, it calls it squeezable snack plastic pouches and caps. But they have, my granddaughter had half of her food for the first four years of her life out of a squeeze thing. Um, and then solo cup. In fact, I brought my little pan. Solo cup. They are number six. I put all this in my recycling right now. So this is clear. If it's a number six and it's clear, you can go in recycling. If it's colored, it doesn't. Half of this is going to be about education. That I totally agree, and I think one of the best parts of this program is that it will hopefully reduce contamination in the recycling toads when people learn. Number one, it shouldn't go in there. And number two, there's a, a new location where we can recycle it properly. But yeah, I agree that a big part of this is about education, which is one of the huge benefits of the yeah. program. The answer is yes. Okay. The answer is yes. We want to, I want to support this and I'll find a way to do it, whether I get their votes or not. Uh, but it's more than just 300 bucks, right? Yeah, right. A couple, a couple that's of cool. toes. If, now, I'll make it more than 500 bucks, solve this problem. We need to have okay. to plan this big. So that, that was my, my, my question. I, I'm all for this. I love to implement it. I see that the, the triple containers are 140 bucks a piece. How many we're looking for? Where are we going to put them? Who's going to maintain them once they're full? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, those, those things. And that's why we're here because location has been discussed extensively, you know, amongst um, Sherry and different in different possible locations. Yes, I talked with um, Chris Andrew and with um, Darcy Little and Tim Sweeney. David Stack, um, and right now the number one suggested area is 
on the Knox Road side of the community building next to where they presently put their trash. Um, this is in your folder. There is a, a metal, I mean, a concrete pad there, which was apparently originally done for a generator. Mm -hmm. Just thinking of that for the compost bins and then some of the other area here for the TerraCycle. And they will look very different. Um, if we have the little triple ones have to be indoors and we have not had anybody offer an indoor space. If I think that was the question that I had. So, yeah, they're only doing the brushes. Yeah, no, two brushes. Yeah. So you have you haven't talked to the schools about putting these in the schools? Not yet. No, I've talked to them about compost, but not those in the schools yet. That's a great idea for these things that come weekly, yeah. right? I mean, especially the squeezable snack, right? Uh, I mean, that, that's a great idea to put in the schools. Unfortunately, we have no control over what you're going to put in the schools. You got to talk to the school board and the SAU. And they might say yes, and we would be, we'd jump yeah, at that. I, I mean, that would be the right place, but. So now I understand that the two, the two sides are outdoor ones. These are indoor. Right. Yeah. So the only thing we're going to have to manage is winter time and trying to find a place where they're not getting covered with snow. And so there might be some things we have to work through for the program. Well, it looks like this generator might have had something over it before. Um, so so we reconstruct our, you know, a little roof there. I know just the guy. You already talked. <laughs> <laughs> it is still there? Yes. Well, I guess I'm looking at this pad here. Well, that's around the others. Okay. The generator pad is around, oh. around the corner, and it does have its shelter. Okay. We'll look for that. I think that spot where there was the cement, it, yeah. there is no roof. It looks like it got taken right. off, but right. yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's Yes. Did you have more questions for them? Yeah, I'm still, yes, I do. Okay. So when you're ready, I would like to make a comment. I just have a concern about the toothbrushes. And we are hoping to use, apparently we've got a fairly substantial recycling committee budget, which ends on July, on June 30. And if we could go out and get some of our containers before June 30, it would be wonderful. So you don't need money. Yeah, money. Yeah, we don't need money for this, no. Uh -huh. Need approval for placement of these bins? Yes, because David Stack recommended. You know, he started listening to what we were thinking of collecting, and he went, "Oh, why don't you take that to the board, a selectman?" <laughs> um, you know, I think it's pretty clear. Other than the toothbrushes. So that is not a concern. The toothbrushes. And we we would collect it in a plastic bag. Yeah. We um the we would have volunteers come and manage the bins. You just fold it up, put it in a box. They give you a shipping label for free, no matter what the weight is. We use the shipping label and send it off. We don't have to go through it. We don't have to sort through these items to make sure there's not um, contamination. Obviously, if we see something obvious, the volunteer can pick it up, but pick it out. But we can send it, and they will deal with any contamination in there. We're not going to be going through and touching stuff. Okay, so why would a volunteer go into the pen and pick something out of it? You know, if you if if you saw something that was if if it was me and I had gloves on and I saw something clearly obviously like that should not belong in there and it was easy to get out, I would do that. Somebody put a snow shovel in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, we're. I don't think any. <laughs> I appreciate your concern where you're going with that, Mike. I do. I think it's cool. And the education that we need. Yep. Um, thank you. Is now, yeah, tomorrow, what we want to order because we need to allocate those funds. Okay. How many will just look one for now for that location? Is that it? By four bins. Four bins. Four bins, two of those doubles, maybe. Or but one might need to be bigger for the pans. So I'm not, one I haven't for picked. One for each. Given that they have bottoms, would it be appropriate for us to simply make a motion to approve 
the recycling committee to go forward with the TerraCycle program, purchasing with the funds they have already, and placing the bins in the areas. I think I'll just talk about the idea. I would like to make that motion. I just have one question. So the site, everything would be in this site. Oh, well, we didn't get the compost yet. Well, but yes, compost. And and the paracycle yeah. in this location. Both. Both, I hope. No, we, we, we did not make more plans. It's just the tariff site. Oh, right, right. Right, we haven't gotten to compost okay, yet. Okay. It's just one location. Yes. Okay. Do we want to make a vote on the paracycle? Or these four items? There's a motion on the floor now. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passed. I just have a quick question. Yes. Um, did you have that motion to specify the location of where that's going? Please, sure. And that's um, well, I thought we authorized David. The motion was authorized David. Oh, yes. just gave it to. Then we know where it's. Yes. Okay. So I have several Thank locations. You. I didn't well, we met several locations. What other locations were you talking about? You, we, right now, we're talking about the community building. What other locations were you? I'm not right now. Okay. I thought you were thinking about the school. I think in the future, just depending on how it works, we could look at expanding it. Would you want us to come back to you if we were trying to expand it to the school or community center? School would be school board. Um, we did talk once about the community. Um, Rec center. Yeah, like the after school program where maybe the parents have go go packets they want to drop off while they're picking up their kids. So, if we did expand it, would you want us to come back to you to talk I, about those? If you went to John and she said, Yeah, put the go go pack in up, um, just have someone's been like, Yeah, she already told me that would be okay, but initially we're going to put everything right here. I stand corrected. That was where the generator was mm -hmm. and the shelter. Thing. I would think if uh, maybe just a little bug in the Chris Andrews' spear about that, or that we can get that rebuilt with DPW or something. I really don't want that with DPW. Thank you. That would be nice. I, I want to cover I would. This would be a futile program in the winter if we don't. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> okay. Program number two, totally separate, nothing to do with TerraCycle. This has a little cost involved. Um, the EPA estimates that more food reaches landfills than any other single material in our everyday trash, constituting 24% of municipal solid waste, food scraps. There's a gentleman, Lou Saviano, who has started a company. He lives down in Manchester. Um, he started a company called Renewal Garden and Compost. And he is picking up compost, food scraps for composting from individuals, from restaurants, um, from different businesses, and from the town of New London. Um, New London program, they had a pilot program that began last October. Um, they have, they started small with 20 families. They thought it was very successful. Um, they actually collect it. Um, it's in toters. These are toters that are the compost toters. They say compost only on them and they're very composty looking. Um, but um, they have now sent more than three tons of food scraps off. Uh, they went, they have uh, proposed and been approved to expand their program in New London um, from 20 families up to 160 families. And they start that on July 1. I spoke with the transfer station person, which is where their toters are, um, and she says that they haven't had a problem with smell, they haven't had a problem with animals, um, that it's all running very smoothly, and that uh, the Waste Reduction Committee, New, New London actually has a Waste Reduction Committee, has, has taken full charge of it. Um, 
so far they're very pleased with this outfit. What we're proposing is to have initially two of these, maybe down there on that concrete dock thing we talked about there, um, for people to bring food scraps to. How popular will be, we don't know. Um, Mark Davis on our committee put out a survey on um, the Bo social media sites and we got 80 responses. Uh, 52 of those were that they were interested. How that translates into the general population, I don't know. So it's something that's gonna to have to be monitored carefully um, and, and checked, we, it can be expanded upon if need be or limited if we need to. I'm sorry, what's the contract? So we give them there is, there is no commitment whatsoever. Right. So I'm going to uh, recommend that we allot uh, $1,000 as a test for this, $300 towards some of the toters, and uh, $700 for six months of fees to see if it works. Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, no. We could I take the thought was let's like, give people how to do it in the backyard. So we live in a rural community, people can do this. Um, and I think there's a ton of benefit in getting it out of the landfill. But maybe not everybody is willing to do that. Maybe the education is worth it. So that's my motion. Yeah, I'm second. Um is this something that um I love this idea. The company that you are talking about. Um, you said they pick up from individuals as well. So if someone wanted to take part of this, they could contact. That's a separate fee and it would be charged to the individual. There is, I think only one family right now doing it in Bow with this company. Carry the way. Oh, go ahead. I did check with Tony Belanger at Pinard. Um, They have a company they work with, um, AgriCycle out of Scarborough, Maine. And uh, it is substantially more expensive. I think he thought, he, of course, he swears by that company and yeah. says they've been around a long time. They're a bigger outfit. We should go there. Uh, uh, no, I think it's, just, there's a lot less transport here and it's cheaper. So, so not, that would be my, ideally, you come back in five months. Tell us that you know we've collected so many tons of pound, we produced this much in the landfill, and that by all means extend the program for you know indefinitely. Um, so I'd like that. that I, I was going to make this similar motion that Chris did that we we give it a test run for six months, see how it works. Obviously, it'll be up to you guys to get the message out there through our, through our pages, uh, to town page, etc. Um, I'd love to see it be a success and we continue on with it. We may even consider doing. Like an information session at the library or something that um, we might produce a video explaining how this works, um, or a video of your information session where you could have families coming in to learn about this program and the TerraCycle program, um, and maybe get some engagement so that people are actively learning about this. And I'm not sure how many people attend those library sessions. Well, if you video it, maybe it would be something that. Um, but I think um, articles, maybe in the Concord Monitor and the Bow Times and social media, and we'll work on some of those first and see how much response we get. One thing that would be helpful for me is more updates on what I'm not supposed to be recycling because I, there's some things I know. <laughs> I know if it has a lid, I can recycle it. If it's, Stick from dry cleaning, no, no hangers, but there's probably more things like that. Canard has a great resource on their website um, that you can specify. Bow, we have one printed out awesome. at home and stuck to the can. So. Yeah, maybe someone should go on. No one listens, but you know what? It's like uh, it's drip, it's drip education, a little bit of time. Yep. Someday I'm going to figure this out. Oh, go, go, some hangers. So, um. 
So on the composting, we did talk, Cherry talk to the school, they're interested. So hopefully we'll eventually see this also at all the cafeterias. They're really excited about the program. And on Thursday, just so you're aware, um, because somebody from the Concord Monitor might be coming with us, we are going to the town of Lebanon because they have their own composting program in the town and actually use all the compost um, for their DPW. So we're going to see how that works. And if there's something that we think would be interesting to the town, we'll come back with that information. Fantastic. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned that this outfit takes their uh, food scraps down to dairy, to the JNF farms in dairy, and that's where it gets composted. Uh, okay, there's a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. No, I'm sorry. No, I, I have a question. Uh, opposed? Okay. Hearing Thank none. You. Thank you. Thanks a lot. School motion passed. Awesome. <laughs> sure drive. Is our trash going to landfill or is it going to the incinerator? incinerator. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I still can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all Thanks. very much. Thank you, guys. I promise you, keep hitting us up, hitting us over the head. <laughs> Dick, did you get it figured out? Are you taken? Uh, do we want to hear from Jeff first and then move on to the water extension? Jeff, you can go, you can go home when we're done with us. Oh, I'll stick around. Oh, well, I was going to say, if you're going to stick around, we'll go to Dubois Boys and King. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Because I know you do hang around sometimes. Yep. The Boys and King water extension project update. So you have to let me share this. You should be able to, oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> you make his feet bigger. It should, when I share, it should It'll go over the whole screen. I think so. Uh, so it might still keep. Yeah, should be all set in a minute. There we go. Hey, um, I'm uh, Nick Schedule from Dubois & King, John Ashley. Um, just here to update you on the 60% design for the water expansion. Um, what we've done uh, as we go into 60%, we've identified three distinct projects for the um, town. Uh, project uh, one being uh, the Bow Junction Water Loop, which is a city of Concord uh, water loop in through the town of Bow to serve existing customers uh, that have um, poor water quality, uh, private or privately owned public water systems uh, uh, at at uh, at least four different um, locations there. Project two is uh, identified as uh, upgrades at the water treatment plant to address iron and manganese and some um, consideration for future. And then project three would be the extension of the municipal water system to Bow Mills, exit one South Street. Uh, so project one, as I mentioned, is uh, what we're calling Bow Junction Loop. It essentially loops the existing water main from uh, City of Concord at the town line here at the Irving. Oops, sorry about that. Um, would go down 3A and uh, provide a service line to the 
for Pony Toyota. And then the main would um, go through an existing crossing under the railroad and connect and replace some of the existing water main and um, essentially forms a loop. We've got a, a cost estimate here for uh, total project costs um, going forward. And then just identified a couple of items in terms of what's a little bit still up in the air. Um, we still need to coordinate with the city of Concord on some of the technical aspects. Um, right now, our estimate has a 12 inch water main. Um, we'd like to look into if an eight inch water main would be um, appropriate for their uh, looping uh, because it, it seems it would be appropriate for the water demand that we have as part of our system. So um, that reduction could have some impacts on other costs in terms of directional drilling and things like that. Nick, on that point, just so I assume you're going to move on to a lot of other things and I don't want to lose this discussion. If we went from 12 to 8 and then at some point in the future, or project 3 happened, and we connect the loop to that line. It, are we going to be bringing 12 inches down, then connecting to this, you know, subpar eight, or is it going to be eight inches that we'll be bringing down? We're seeing this as an independent project and not really considering it an interconnect with Concord. So this would just be the city of Concord's water. And if we were to if we were to consider going down to the eight inch, we're kind of committing to saying that this is just city of Concord. We're not really thinking about an interconnection. Um, part of what this does is it eliminates this, you know, if we were to come um, from the Bose municipal system and do an, a true interconnection, we have to cross the Turkey River here, um, south of, of the Grapponi Toyota. And so there's a significant cost associated with that. So like, I think we wanna make sure we understand whether we wanna go in that direction or not. And so, would there be a restriction if you did do the interconnect and we went to an eight inch? Yes. Um, how much it impacts growth within the, the town? I don't think it really would. It would potentially impact some of the movement of water in an interconnect situation where you're trying to maybe um, supplement one of the sources if there was an issue. The, uh, the main off the Hall Street is 12 inches though, isn't it? The one that the one dead ends. Honestly, I've tried to get some information out of them and haven't until I dig a we're hole. In there. Yeah, we're getting there. How much would it say? I, I haven't, I don't know that. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's it's about 4,000 linear feet of pipe. And, and it's like a 12 inch pipe price. Yeah. So <clears throat> we go from like 174 down to probably, you know, figured. Uh, I would figure $35 times 4,000 feet. No, we're not gonna- $150,000. We're not gonna limit our ability to have true interconnection from bow to Concord and to service our residents for 100,000. Yeah, but Chris, you have to understand that this agreement with Concord was for the bow junction. So, period. yeah. Period. Period. Well, no, no, I'm not suggesting that we're yeah. I'm not suggesting we're taking water from concrete to no. our town. I'm talking about that we would be able to serve our buildings with our water at some point. There's some trickle other things like so the direct so there's a portion where we would be directionally boring the off ramp on ramp from 89. This this um this area right here where it's state um turnpike DOT. We'd have to do a directionally drill and sleeve that. So theoretically, it's not just the price of the that four thousand feet of water main. I probably would have to look at the sleeves. There's, you know, potentially that's a significant change. I think it would be worth maybe doing some more refined estimating just to know what that difference is. But um, no, if Pitco has new systems. I don't if it does not. So when they move to Concord and that property if available, if they move to Concord, if they move to Concord. Okay. Who's that uh, speaking? Yes, please. <clears throat> Nate Anderson. What's there, uh, are you a resident of Bo? I work in Bo at Pico. Oh. Oh. No. I come here to, today to ask for a sidewalk, crosswalk. Sorry. 
So if, well, let's say a Jumbo would come uh, with an eight inch main, we'd be able to supply them with fire. Uh, yeah, I, I, all of that is dependent on getting a lot more information out of what Concord's system has for pressures and what's serving us from Concord. So like us having an eight inch versus us having a 12 inch probably wouldn't make a difference if we had as much water as we needed right at the border, right? So like, we don't know exactly what that number is at the border to do that calculation. But the next step really is to try and get, you know, working technically with the city um, on some of those aspects to, to understand what what the implications are because it, it's it's real money i mean it's it's going to make a difference i think it's worth um understanding what that is Steve, i thought um uh, the guy from alice knew what size that pipe was because remember we we're talking about the virus production coming out of concord they have an eight now i thought they were coming off 12 they're not well, yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's, and we're assuming a 12. So yeah. we're assuming a 12. So I think our estimate it would only, you know, hopefully be reduced if we were able to go to an eight. But I think from a budgeting standpoint and um, what we're looking at going forward would be a 12 until somebody tells us otherwise. So, so this, I'm sorry to relate, this particular issue is really important to me. When we say we're six kind of design, some of this was already designed prior to not knowing we were going to do the interconnect, but now that we are, is is that is that design complete or not? We're uh, no. So this wasn't ever processed past sixty percent. I mean, it's it's um, from a, a total design perspective, it's probably more than sixty percent, just because of how much we've had to progress it to get what we felt were good estimates and knowing where the alignment was going to go and other impacts from other utilities. So like the survey work is, is um, pushed pretty far along. Um, you know, what we've done is uh, develop a good cost estimate so that we could apply for um, money through the uh, pre-application with SRF. And then, um, you know, I think we have pretty good uh, ranking potential because of the uh, water quality uh, improvements to some of those existing systems. So until we know, you know, how that works out, I think that's going to depend on how it gets funded. But I think we're, you know, we're, that's why we're calling this project one is because this is the one that I think, you know, from a design perspective, we, we'd probably want to move forward with next in order to have a set of drawings that we can actually put out to bid and do work. And we got our pre-app in May, May 15th, right, Dave, on that? Yeah, that's what he was saying yeah. Yeah. for this. Uh, and okay. Yeah. I did you a couple of days before. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I was in. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to keep moving, the uh, project two, uh, water treatment, we're calling this water treatment phase one. Um, we, we noted before the high levels of iron and manganese um, before, Traditionally, it's been more aesthetic and less health risk, but um, that aesthetic concern has impacted the town in the past with um, some of the bulk water sales. And, and um, certainly there are some complaints about water and it comes up here and there. Um, what we're anticipating and have been anticipating is a, a new maximum contaminant level developed for manganese, which is a health advisory. Um, it hasn't been rolled out. There's some litigation that's stalling that, but um, based on current levels, there would be requirement for the town to notify customers about elevated manganese. So um, we've identified a project to treat for iron and manganese, but also look at future space for other treatment of contaminants of concern. Uh, high levels of sodium and high chlorides have been detected in the water system. So those are something that would require a, a higher level of treatment, um, reverse osmosis. That process has a, a lot of wastewater that's developed with it. So that's why we aren't considering that as part of phase one. It's just, it would be a future phase. Uh, that wastewater component requires the town to invest significantly in the sewer system so that we had a place to get rid of the wastewater that would be generated from that treatment process. Um, um, in this, I remember the last time you were here, um, 
doing this water extension, there were concerns about um, increasing levels of PFAS in the water as more users um, are accessing this water. Why would we put off treating the water for PFAS if you know that's coming? And we've we've at least had some discussions with um, with state people on the water committee um, about there's even a possibility the PFAS levels would go down with the increased use, depending on the situation. And we the fact is we just don't know. <laughs> it's so it would be a lot to invest to extend the sewer system so that we could dispose of the backwash on you know for a situation where that's a possibility as well that we the PFOS levels may improve because of the higher demand. So what is that phase two cost? Phase phase one. Sorry, project. Project two. Project two. Project two. So phase one of project two, which would be the the iron and manganese treatment and the treatment building, um, is a project cost of three point four five million. So I mean, if I just have a exhibit showing, you know, the building itself would be larger than it would be utilized for under phase one. We just have space for that future treatment. So, as John mentioned, not that unknown kind of. There's some, there's enough of an unknown that we want to make sure we plan for the space and um, and implement treatment if those levels were to come up. And um, what is the cost of that treatment? Because if we it's significant. So so like we don't have a we don't have a number. The sewer ex, some of the sewer work includes at least a, a a mile of gravity sewer and a mile of force main and a sewer pump station to get rid of the wastewater. And so the just the piping for the sewer was somewhere around $3 million. The pump station is probably, you know, 500 to a million. And so I think we're, you know, we're probably in the four to $5 million range by the time you get through the treatment. And how soon would we know if those levels were elevated or decreased? Uh, I mean, it's it's a constant testing. So uh, the, the system is testing for it constantly. Um, we would know, you know, it, it's going to, again, depend on whether how the demand changes over time. And, and, and neither of these, uh, neither of these, neither of these, this levels if the uh, injunctions are over. Yeah, that's that's and and the same can be said for the additional use of water for iron and manganese. We don't know how that could impact those levels. So so the treatment of the iron and manganese, we have to get rid of that uh sludge. sludge. Yeah. Sludge. Yeah. So that so that's a much lower be, volume. So through a sewer system? That would be um, up maybe up to a 2,000 gallon storage tank that you, you pumped out periodically, probably, you know, an in, yeah, in ground so. storage tank. Okay. It generates a lot less sludge, uh, or well, this is sludge. And the treatment process the, uses a like a decanter to like take off as much of that water and recycle it and just concentrate the sludge so that you're only using a 2000 gallon storage tank to store it and then you're pumping it up you know you're having it hauled okay, so if we were to to do to well to treat for iron and manganese and then any other treatment we have to do down the road would it make sense to put the sewer in with the extension from bond to the put they, the pipe in the ground i mean there could be some savings there but there still would have to be in completely separate trenches um it it would 
be we, you know, we could check to see if there'd be a waiver of it, but normally those the because it's wastewater, it's required to be 10 feet from the water. It's not it's not you know it's not and sewage, right? Right. But it's still wastewater. And I think you would be building the sewer system so that you could connect sewage also. So, so this these water tests are being done at the well site. Correct. Mm -hmm. Not at the tank site. Right. Um, they, I, I think they, they, they test uh, after treatment at the treatment plant building. Okay, is where they would pull samples to get their typical monitoring testing. Okay, I think when they have complaints, they have in the past gone throughout the system to take samples from other places in the system. So I guess, uh, and maybe this is more of a question for you. If we're talking about getting, um. You know, seeing if we can lower the PFAS level by increasing usage. What are we doing as a town now to kind of cycle through the water that's sitting in that way too large tank that we have? Um, actually, yeah, we're doing it. Are we, are we're not we, holding as much in there. We're having to do more frequent flushing. Flushing. So the water just. So is there is there any way we can like practice this out to see if the PFAS levels drop? Is there a, we, is that a thing? We've talked a little bit with the operators about that. Like mm -hmm. if we were to run the plant less often at higher rates, right? so that we could try and, you know, pull in at a higher rate, but I'm not sure, like, I don't think that that has been actually implemented in practice. And yeah. I don't know that we have a really good understanding of whether that's a good test or not, because right. you would have to do it for a prolonged enough period of time to maybe see something. Yeah, it would um, be interesting to see if you can run a test without spending five months. Yeah. I guess that's where I'm getting. Yeah. Oh, I think in some sort of. There's not a lot of people using it. Yeah. Um, okay. I'd like to see the third uh, base, which is I thought what we hired you for. Did you have a question on this? Uh, no. David, yeah, I just want to start to beat the treatment part to death. But this has been, I don't know, a year at least of meetings with the operator, uh, the engineers, and the drinking water uh, protection committee. We're very well versed in this, of which Cindy Clevens and so there's still kind of some variables on, as you guys are saying, on what exactly. Do we want to treat? We've talked to PFAS. We've talked to, it's just coming up with a plan because what you need to remember is with treatment, now it's separated out, there's really going to be no source of funding other than grants and tax dollars to pay for this because there's, the, the system isn't generating an extra 100000 200000 for a bond. Right. So I think part of what we have to look at too is how do we you know, slowly but surely address what we need to address now, but accommodate it in the future. But again, it's, we're, then we're talking another five million. I, I think ultimately it's a, a fork in the water kind of approach. David. Right. One, you know, we don't have a trigger today where we have an obligation to protect people from that one. Because that, that's a different, if we're pumping right. water that was dangerous and it's not just a report, we'd have to deal with it. We don't have that today. What we have is a community saying, yeah, that's water. Number of our uh, industrial uh, saying get us water, and uh, I think uh, I think a number of our residents would like that. So we need to figure that out first, and be cognizant of this other stuff. But until we have more people on the system, we're never going to be able to justify five million dollars. Well, I think we just need to be aware that there is a significant cost down the line, a potential for a significant yeah. cost down the line to deliver this water. And we don't want our residents or businesses to be guinea pigs, you know, and discover some serious contaminants um, after a significant period of time. Um, and then all of a sudden have to do a major treatment project. Just add that on the funding side, um, we have applied for, there's emerging contaminants money for manganese removal right now. So we've applied for that. If that becomes available, it may How much would that change be? the perspective of you know what you think about doing it. Um, and but 
uh, maybe a million dollars, I believe, was one of their yeah. potential thresholds. Um, and uh, right now, at the PFOS levels that you've had detections of, you don't fit the category to be eligible for the emerging contaminants funding for PFOS that they offer. So we haven't applied for that. I'm, I'm going to accept that as good news. Yes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I didn't get the million dollars from that. I think that changes. Yeah. So talk to us about Project 3. So Project 3 is uh, water extension of the municipal system to Bow Mills Exit 1. Um, 15,000 linear feet of water main. Uh, we, we know it's, uh, we have New Hampshire DOT right of way and Town of Bow right of way to deal with. Um, one of the most recent updates that we've had in the cost estimate is we've um, revisited hanging the, uh, so the I-93 crossing at Grandview Drive. We we talked about doing a directional drill versus being on the bridge. Um, I think, well, DOT's preference would have been directional drill, but I think when we did some borings on either end, we found shallow bedrock in that area that increased our directional drilling costs. And um, so I think after one of our meetings, it was encouraged to go back and look at that. We've looked at that. There is um, in our cost estimate, a significant reduction in, in cost of, you know, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we okay. updated our, our um, cost estimate to reflect hanging it on the, um, on the bridge. Um, the uh, so this kind of we had been breaking this into kind of three projects where we were talking about the water main, the storage tank, and um, South Street interconnection. Uh, because there's you know to go from um, the, to go from Vaughn to Logging Hill, we we have that I ninety three crossing at Grandview. But to go from the end of Grandview along South Street to the Concord Town Line, we have another crossing of 89 um, and Turkey River there. So that one we we still have as directional drilling. That's a pretty significant cost of that component. So depending on which properties we want to serve first and how you want to break that project up, there's some potential to figure that out, whether you're going to South Street or to exit one. Uh, either one, you're going to need the storage tank. And how would the, I mean, the exit one redesign, that interchange redesign? That is? Um, right now, it, it, it doesn't have any impact on, on us. We were talking about using the local access road to interconnect to Bow Junction as part of that. Um, but uh, you know, potentially it might change some of the directional drilling locations. And we've got a pretty significant length in there right now where we're going from one side of, on South Street, one side of the I-89. Um, so the south side of 89 there, and we're directionally drilling all the way under that tight underpass and across Turkey River and through the off-ramp, basically. Okay. Um, What's the cost of doing Project 3? Uh, so Project 3 is between 11.6 and 12.4 million. So um, that 12.4, that's all three parts? Of that is all three parts, yeah. And it um, when we were looking at the tank site, What's that? You're moving fast to me. So 12.3 million is project three. I oh, just want to see that. Yeah. Slide. Yeah. Right, so 11, I'm going to say 12.4 is project three, but that's uh, now project one. Is that on top of 12.4? So is it? Yes. Yeah. Well, right. Project so three. initially hired you to do a water line for all of this area. We didn't know when we started this that Concord was going to come to the table and start talking to us. Right. And whether Concord's talking to us or not, I think we want to know what it costs us 
to provide water to that whole area, that whole area which currently is in a uh, TIF for that. And so it's 12-4 plus 2-7 to do all of it. And yeah. that's duplicative. Project, no. three, project three is not the drilling under the is the is the hanging water line. Correct. Yeah, the lower water. cost. Yeah. 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 And six is it. Yeah, the range, the range for project three has to do with the elevated storage tank options. So you have a requirement for project three to do an elevated storage tank. There is a range based on which design you would do. Um there's no du there's no no duplicates between project one and project three. There's actually probably a gap where we we aren't crossing that Turkey River either at the end of Carriage Road or between South Street and um, the back of one of the Graffoni properties, we, so you know, that, that local access road. Understanding this list of costs correctly to say that you add up all of these and that's our total cost. And that includes the connection to Concord. It's not saying that we are going to be able to provide that project one area with water without the connection. Right. Right. We had it configured that way before, right. but we've we've made this gap in between the two systems, given that the current plan is to to feed the junction from. Uh, and to, Concord. Yeah, I guess to do it as economically as possible with the understanding that Concord was at. Uh, yeah. I just don't know what Concord wants. Right. I don't know what to have yeah. no bargain. You know, they may say, well, you, know, you pay $2.7 million, Bo, and we'll just sell the water to your residents. If that's the case, probably a done deal. If they say we want $2.7 million plus we're going to charge you water and we want every increase in property assessment for all of eternity. That I need to build my own water. <laughs> right. so, would, would I agree to that today? Yep. Sure. <laughs> because the water stinks. So yeah. I think and so, at some point I'm, I need to have the answer to what does Project Three cost if it includes the initial initial call? Yeah. We I mean we had it configured that way before. We could What's produce that. that. We could go back to that pretty guess easily. Between the three projects that we have that adds up to that, the contingency for all three of those would probably cover that. Probably. Okay. Yep. That's good. And because I thought part of the reason that we placed the tower where we placed it was because we wanted to be able to get to the end of. Uh, it's yeah. I mean, uh, the exit one property is the, is the higher elevation than Graponi, the the Bow Junction area. So the the, the 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 development was never to take it. Up 3A to Graponi. I thought that was never the plan. I thought the plan was to go up Grand. It was and right. Leave that section yep. unaccounted for. Yeah, the, the way we were going to get to Bow Junction was once we got to the overpass for Grandview at 93, we were going to go down Carriage Road right. there and then across Turkey if if we weren't getting anything from Concord. Right. The other, you know, and and it all had to do with timing because if the if the uh 89-93 interchange happened sooner, then there could have been an alternate route from South Street down to Bow Junction, which may have been a better route than trying to cross Turkey River at the south end of Bow Junction. Because we could have you know, we could have tied in with other construction. So like there, there's there's a route to Bow Junction. It's just which way do we go and which happens first. If if we're the driver on it, then you know we can update that to. Is there, is there any grant money for Project Three? We've well, we've applied. Did we apply for that? No, no. I think that's the hardest one because it's basically looked at as an economic yeah. development project. That's another reason why we split them out because yeah. Bow Junction Loop. Is the MTPE all that? We're hoping we could tap into those types of funds. Yep. Um, like I said, the water yeah. stand. Yeah, I mean, I think you you could argue if you don't have the Concord water source that Project Three would potentially be extending to deal with water quality at Bow Junction. But they're always going to look as long as Project One exists. They're going to always look at that as the least cost. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to yeah. direct the cost today? 
still, still a lot of water. Yeah. I think we just, yeah, we just want to confirm the town priority list in terms of, you know, project one, project two, project three. Uh, um, so I, we have not taken a vote on that. Um, that is not my priority. My priority list is to get water down pre A to Kupon. It's always been my priority. Now, if Concord will do that, that changes everything for, for me. Well, right now we have a tenant agreement. Agree. It looks like. Right. But, it, but if, if you're asking correct what your priority is, my priority list is to get water from our water tank to Kupon and anyone else who touches Indian. If Concord steps up or if MDTE money steps up and makes that work, great. My second, Priority, my Christmas priority is expanding water to all of that town. The treatment that it would be the least, the lowest priority. I don't feel the same. I think boat junction needs to get done. It's been 40 plus years of in the making and kind of have a tentative agreement, just waiting for Congress to get through their budget season so that we can get an agreement. Just to be clear, Mike, Matt, that is my priority, is to get water to go to Judge. Congress already agreed. Well, tentatively agreed to it. They voted on it, just looking to put a, a contract together. We have nothing in writing from them yet. No, no they've uh, The budget just got approved. Yeah. They had asked to take a break. Yeah. And so, so nothing, no, no correspondence with Congress about contract. Agreement. No, we haven't. I've met with. Well, I've met no, with. We have nothing in writing, Matt. To my knowledge. Yeah, we haven't drafted it up yet. We've right. talked terms, and, but that's still the terms that have to go back to the council and the board. Right. right. So it would be irresponsible of us to really depend on. Uh, we have we have to consider all yeah, of the absolutely. options. Yes. 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 So we've got a version of we've got a version of drawings that get bow water to Grapponi. Um. And we, I guess what we should, it seems like what we should do at this point is include continuing to advance that part of it for now until you tell us not to. Or no, to Congress. <laughs> well, I mean, I, pay 2.6 million and take care of that issue. Yeah, no, trust me. Um, uh, i chat with you all. In a couple of months after we talk to Concord, because that's a you know the grant money will change that. If you tell me we have yeah. millions, yeah, that will change my priorities. And if you tell me if that tells me Concord offered us access to the water for the off the water, like, we're in. You want to speak to the water tank? Um, the only thing I was going to say was you know at, we've done some survey work to try and better identify what the future demand is going to be for the water system on a, on a whole. Um, we're processing that data. We want to work with the planning staff to make sure we're considering future growth as much as the survey results. Um, I think we got, you know, we sent out about 150 and we got 45 responses. Um, depending on what that future demand is, there's I have a, in my gut want to try and reconsider the booster station versus the storage tank and whether that's the, the more economical based on what the ultimate demand is going to be. If it's, um, you know, the if the life cycle costs are yeah. lower because we don't need, well, yeah. you could look at, the, the tank size cost of the has tank gone up. itself, yeah, and versus replacing it with a booster pump off of the existing tanks. So, if there's higher demand, a booster station would make more sense, or the opposite, right? Yeah, yeah, the opposite, right? Higher demand, we we it definitely pushes us towards the new tank, uh, but if it's lower, it's worth relooking at, and it solves some other problems with the costs down, water age in the existing tank, and um, you know, I think when we started with the tank, we started in a different location with a different style and the cost of the tank has increased a little bit, um, in terms of life cycle and, you know, painting and things like that, that's upkeep of a tank versus, um, when we first looked at the booster station. So, um, I think the, the waiting till the, the two grant we've 
applications we put in, we think that the priority list typically comes out at the end of July, early August. So that would be a good time to get more information um, in terms of what those two projects might have for funding coming up. Um, it's just a reminder. Yeah, we, should get, we should get you through our August week there. Yeah. Yes. All right. Tanya, can you do that for us? What, what we've applied for is loans, though. There's not, it's not straight up grant money. It's the revolving loan. Fund. Yeah. So it's, so it's like a 2% loan. So it's still, what we're scraping for is that big wad of free money that's come down. I there was the, money. Yeah. I think what, what, we, what we're trying to do is get a, loan. get a project identified, get into the process for this pre-application. The treatment, there may be some grant money involved in the right. treatment. Straight up grant. Um, the loan money that we could get for the for project one, I think we would want to try and leverage that with with drinking water groundwater trust fund, which is you know an opportunity to get some of the MTB money and Exxon Mobil settlement money. That could be grant money. Um, that's I think a fall application. So once we knew, you know, if we knew we had a project that was three, two point five million, whatever it is for the Concord inner uh, Concord Loop. Um, we can identify a couple other funding sources that maybe would pick yeah, in. There will be some. There will be some free or straight up grade. Forgiveness or whatever they yeah. yeah. Now, are you still looking at the three day location for the tank or are you still considering? Yeah, I mean the what yep. we're what we're at, you know, as as we kind of button up the 60% design, the 60% design plans have a water storage tank on the the Property on 3A to make the make the project work. Okay. Um, what about the booster? Go ahead with the booster stand. Would that be at the same location? Roughly, I think you're a little bit more flexible on where that could go. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think we would we would uh, potentially look at some some other properties to start. Just if there was town-owned property that would make sense. At the neighborhood meeting on um, back in. Sometime over the winter, hedging towards spring. <laughs> um, you had mentioned uh, the possibility of using property uh, that we already own, that we have a current take on. Um, Along and, the river. And uh, the, the current giant lat ground level tank that we have. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, you had mentioned that it is possible to put a elevated tank on that location, um, which would eliminate any kind of land acquisition concerns, and you would still be doing a booster pump um, for the logging hill section. Is that accurate? Well, well Elena, the, the one that's where it is now mm -hmm. is an easement from public service. Or okay. Whoever, so we only have a easement right to access and get up there, and that's it. I'm just so kidding. we'd have to renegotiate with them if we wanted to modify. You know, it's very particular what we can do on that part. I mean, we could look at it. I mean, everything's possible to look at. Well, I think that's a question to the engineers. What then? The yeah, with, if, would with engineering wise that, work? Right. Yeah. Would it would be feasible. I'm just thinking long term, you know, we, we have the initial investment and then what does it cost, you know, land acquisition wise or mm -hmm. whatever we do down the line. We already have a location. I does a tank, would a tank work the way that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think when we were initially looking at trying to use the existing tank, we were getting a situation where we were right at the threshold, kind of like 20 PSI. So if you did an elevated tank in that same location, you could gain 30 PSI maybe if it's a 60 foot tank, mm -hmm. 25 PSI. So, you, you know, um, it could be an option. Yeah, I think it's it's something that- We haven't modeled it. Yeah. But... I think there's still, uh... You know, this answer needs to be made based on whether or not we connect to the pony, ultimately what money we want to do this project, 
whether or not we do a booster, whether or not we have development on mobiles before then. Uh, I don't think we're ready to make any of those decisions tonight. Yeah. This information is super helpful, and I thank you guys. Can I have a copy of this presentation? I don't think it's in yeah. a second. No, it's not. Uh, could you send it to Tanya and Tanya can forward it out to everybody? So, I just have one more question on board. So the, the contracts that take it next to the next phases, you're we're gonna wait. Oh yeah. Cut them off. Well, stop how would, stop how working. We, how could we do any of those without but we gotta still design the water for Boat Junction, for example. We gotta we're gonna put it in. We have to design that main, you know. I can come how far you want them to we go. Did, the last contract we gave them was for a plan to provide water all the way down three A. And to build us. Yeah. I we never directed them to go to option one. Yeah, the chat section. Never did. Yeah. I want what we pro what we were promised in our original contract, which is a plan to get us all the way there. If, if ultimately Connor said we're going to give you access to water, we don't need it, we can do that. But you know, he, he set up a tip district with, with the sole purpose of getting water to uh to Gopone and ultimately tax one. We need to know what that's going to cost us. And uh, ultimately, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. the, the reason. I'm just trying to look at where do we go? Do these guys stop? What can they keep doing? What? I think they can keep asking for the rent money. They can, if Concord comes to us next week and says, they have access to the water. I think then we have a first name. Just to Concord. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think what you're saying is make sure that we have plans in place either way, that we can view plans either so way. We so to the complete the that way. they are still under contract to complete those two options, that's what they should be working on. Yes. Well, but they're not. Right. Why not? Because the 60% yeah. is the gone. Oh. The 60% is done. The 60% is not done. Where's the 60% plan that puts water to a proponent? Uh, it would be what we have is contract two in here. And then I'll have to pull up the one, the version where we have it from before. But yeah, we, ha we have plans that we developed to do that. We brought in tonight the most updated plans but we have plans that we've reviewed with you previously as pr a progress set that does that does thing. exactly what you're talking about. Completed to sixty percent though, or it was. I, that it may be a. Tonight, we'll look back at the piece, yeah. and we'll look back at the piece that brings it to. I, where we we're talking about, but I'm it was pretty far along, and um, the the main things we were doing at that point were going through um, other existing utilities, coordinating with DOT. We've done, yeah, we've done that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we we basically have that. We just didn't bring it in to present it tonight. I, the last meeting I was at, like we talked about, yeah. are we going to put a tower on the the oh, golf car property. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to the neighbors again over on Heather Lane. Uh, whether if there's a tower on golf car property, it's going to be raised or lowered. Is it going to be steel or other things that we paint? And uh, does that give us enough water? So that's, that is the iteration of a plan that I anticipate, which is a solution with a water tower of options at Number of sites, water all the way to the end, so that we we're ready to go to our because how do we how do we spend another penny without the understanding that we're going to get ready to go to the residents and say we need 15 million dollars and the TIF district that we've created is going to generate X and the bond is going to cost Y and either there's a delta or not and we'll pay for it. How do you how do you do more planning without knowing that? <laughs> European in July. I don't, and there's a lot of questions I can't generate it tonight. I don't know where we would spend more money to bring us closer to a resolution 
based on the unanswered questions that I have. So, would you put more meat on the bones? Uh, yeah, we can bring in the we can bring um, in the plans of, of the. So, uh, just for the you know with a, a sixty percent plan to uh, put water all the way down to Bow Junction. And just and bone mills. Right? And, bone, and bone mills, yes. Yep. So like we're missing is the connection somehow between yep. the two right. projects. And, so, and you, you brought that to us once already. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You have to cross under you have to go under Turkey River at Croponi. There's a I don't know how you don't remember that, all the options going up, coming down South Street to get the old junction. Yeah. Old yeah. And then we had a meeting where we said heaven lane is where we wanted to put the town. And the neighbors said, ah, there are other options. You guys said, yeah, there's other options. Yeah. What about what about the golf cart property? Yeah. So then golf cart, but then we're gonna do engineering. We're gonna do yes, more testing. I thought it was gonna happen. Some kind of testing was gonna happen on golf cart property. Yes. Yep. Yes. I've not heard about that. I've not heard about if you did it there, what the cost would be to put water all the way down three. I thought that's what was gonna come out of that. Yes, we can put the tower on the golf cart property. Yes, we're going to have enough water pressure. And this is how much it's going to cost. Now, in the intro, we finally heard after 30 years, Concord might be willing to give us water. And that will very much change every that part of that out. And if Concord says over the next two months, we will give you water, pay 2.7, and you tell me 2.7 is way cheaper than whatever that plan was going to look like to go under and over and around. And we have to make two votes. In, in your estimation, going that route, which I thought was going to be extremely costly, would be less than getting the boat junction connection from Concord? No, I mean, I think it, it would be pretty close to that 11 point something to 12.4. It, it would be, I, I think that's probably pretty close, is 12 million. It must just apply water to everybody to boat junction, yeah. South Street, yeah, the whole nine yards. Yeah, 12 point. 12.4. 12.4 to probably, you know, and it's going to depend on the contingencies in each of those, but, uh, you know, another might be another 150,000 to, yeah. to get across the Turkey River at, at uh, the south end of okay. Bow Junction. I think understood. What I asked you earlier was if 12.4 plus two seconds, I thought you said yes. I thought, is it 12.4 plus two seconds to do the Concord Loop? And then he said, yes, it's, it's probably more the whole product. The original six. No, you were, yeah, I'm sorry, I did misspeak. So it's, it is the 12, the 12 four would get you to the south side of uh, Bow Junction, and then the 2.6 would get you the rest of, uh, of Bow Junction. Okay. Yeah. 15. So 15. 15. That's a big deal. Correct. And just one more, maybe we have a, because part of this too is maybe we have a work session because. We're also trying to look at being able to fund it because remember originally five years ago we thought the estimate was 15 or 14 million to do everything water treatment and it was going to be covered by development at exit one that's not going to happen with the cost the actual cost of price now being another five or six million the development flatly isn't going to be able to cover all of that no but we also have a tip district where that's what i'm that tip district is, is paid. And I don't know what it's now generating. Right. But the thing it's not going to cover it. Yeah. yeah. Right now, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cover it. But uh, well, yeah, but we're also overdue for reset. When that happens, I imagine it's never going to change it a bit. Um good. Yeah. I, I mean it's just something to start thinking about we, work. Maybe we can spend a couple of work session uh, as they suggested. I I I need to get what Congress going to say. And then we need to finalize one plan or the other, I think. If Congress is going to give us water, we need to figure that out. My first one call is all fogged up. Mike, I'm not fine. It's on. No, I know. Hey, who would have said it? Either we're going to write a $15 million bond for one item, or we're going to do a 12 five and a two fix. If it's the same number, I'd rather control the water. But we've determined it's not going to be the same number. Like it would be the same. So where do we want to go from here? It sounds like it's come back with that piece in, give it some new numbers, 
work with Concord, and then we'll, but you guys, as far as that numbers were, were stopped. So you want one project that will take bow water and get it all the way to the north. Yes. One single contract would be done as one massive that's project. That's what you brought us a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. I thought that's what you were charged with. We, well, we've done that, but we've broken it into s smaller pieces based on trying to do funding for it. So, so the reason we broke it into you know smaller chunks was that we didn't think that the fifteen plus million was something that could happen in one project. So we were saying, okay, if exit one is developed first, is the, then well, we were talking about Dow Road. So Dow Road was to you know how do we get it just to Dow Road, and then. How do we get it to one, you know, exit one? And then we talked about, okay, how do we just get it to Grapponi? And then the Concord thing came up and we were like, we've got a version that gets it to Grapponi from, from our system, but do we want to go to the next, you know, do we, do we go beyond 60% to actually put design plans ready to bid when we don't know what Concord is going to do? So that's where we kind of stopped we adjusted our design so that we were focusing on allowing for that Concord connection, um, adjusted our cost estimates again to try and make it a, a chunk that could be yeah. funded. But we have, we have a version that would, you know, we can give you one single cost estimate that has the tank and getting it to Graponi Junction and Bow Mills. So we could bring that. It shows all of the options, all of the costs, the different phase, you know, um, I'm just, you know, without having this presentation in front of me and then trying to figure out what does it look like with or without Concord, what does it look like with exit one or straight down 3A, you know, I think we need a hard copy. So, we don't want to go. Well, uh, you'll hear back about grant funding at the end of July. Is that what the expectation is? Just, just the revolving so, loan fund grant. Okay, well, there would be new information, right. but not until after the end of July. So, so they can come back in July. No. We're still August. looking for more information, as much information as possible. So it wouldn't be any sooner than August. Now, what could they bring back to us in August besides that? I don't know. But well, I think it's also important for them to understand, you know, what the consensus of the board is regarding uh, whether Bow Mills or 3A is more important. Because to me, it is, it is 100 percent Pony is more important. Water to the pony, which I understand will bring water down on it, but uh, right. that is important. Yeah, you know, that the potential that there might someday be a development over here at exit one, that is not, not a priority for me. If we have we have people who don't have clean water today that I'd like to get water to. They're paying taxes. Yep. So we can we can mix and match our projects so that we, I mean, we could also do extension of the municipal system to the Grandview overpass, and instead of going across, we just go down Carriage Road and go to Graponi, and then give you a cost for that, and then it excludes a significant portion of going to Bow Mills. So that you know that could be the first if that's your priority, that would be. Could be one. Uh, so going along 3A, we were always going to go to Grandview and then down Carriage Road to get back to Bow Junction across the river and serve all of Bow Junction. That's that could be one project rather than. Yeah, we'll get the yeah. numbers because again, one thing to consider if we just did Bow Junction, it's 12 something million dollars. There's no way to pay for that. Again, it's straight up tax dollars and grants. That There's are, no way to pay for any of that. Who's going to pay for this other than the citizens of Bo or the Pitt district that it's in? The, oh, so you're, you're, <laughs> so you're throwing the 
the TIF district money is residents who saying or whatever. No, it's, it's, it's not going to change. One, there's only two ways to pay for that. A revolving loan fund is still us. That's not grant money. Right. You and, the income. Yeah. Right. So therefore, it's either we go to the town and say, do you want to bond 12 or $15 million? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that is the only option. And then it may be offset by some tip dollars that come right. in now or right. in the future. Right. That is nobody else. Okay. Grant money. <laughs> yeah. But they're telling us the two grants they applied for for revolving loan. So if it's if right. we're paying for it, it's the citizen to vote on the side about twelve and a half or fifteen million dollars for water yeah. And and I think is down road in the tip. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're not that far away from having some tax dollars coming. And then they can use our water system, which would be well, but that's idea. Yeah, you know, but it's that's, that's how it works. Yeah. All right. I think we can meet with you in August. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, David, can we bring up the gentleman? Or my, oh, sorry. Uh, like, can we bring up the gentleman who met the public? Uh, who had a public comment session? Yes. If you, if the board wants to. Yeah, I think so. And I'll I'll give you it back. We had a public comment for you show up started a little earlier tonight, so we're out of order. But uh, if you have something you want to come up and share with us, by all means, come on up. Yeah, I was told it was started at five, and then I was told it started at six. So I don't know. We started a little early. Check. I apologize about yeah. that. We always start at six. Always, always, always. My name is Nate Anderson. I live in Franklin, uh, three eighty five Shaw Road. Or plus, sorry. 238 Pleasant Street in Franklin, New Hampshire, and I work at Pitco and Bo. And I'm here to talk today about the junction at Route 3A and 89, uh, about the lights there. I Is talked to- else? Is that a state road or a town? Yeah, can I do a quick yeah. conversation? I, I don't even know. Like, no. honestly, I talked to the state. Oh, under a problem with public comment. We're going to hear your oh. comments, okay? Okay. Uh, we probably won't decide on it tonight. It will be addressed at the next meeting. Yep. So, and do you have something to add, Dave? Yeah, just a, just a quick add. Um, so, uh, guys, for you first. Nate. Nate, sorry, Nate. Nate, Nate contacted me and said, hey, can something be done to put in a signalized crosswalk or just a crosswalk between the two pit buildings? So he and I talked and, you know, I explained to him how the Graponi project worked that yes, the town took the lead and it's actually our crosswalk, you know, we have to maintain, but Graponi paid the total cost to install it and they pay any of the ongoing maintenance costs. Um, and I guess you contacted the engineer. He sent me back, uh, he sent me back some information um, on, that's what the state would be looking to do is be basically partner with the town. They don't care where it's funded by, but it would be our crosswalk. So that's where we're at is, is looking for is the, is it something the town would be willing to undertake. Are you looking to do something like Raponi? At first, I assumed that it was a state-owned road and they would be in charge of flipping the cost. I'm not here to add on to your bill. It already sounds like you already have enough problems <laughs> with money. It only took you one meeting to figure it out. Um, <laughs> but it's not safe. It's not safe to run across Route 3A. Um, that is the most popular area right there. It's right in between 93 and 89 on Route 3A. And looking both ways and waiting three seconds to run across isn't acceptable to me and shouldn't be to the town of Bo or anybody. And if there's this much trouble getting in a crosswalk, what do you think happens if one of us get hit or a group of us crossing a road? Who who flips the bill then? Is is that on Bow or is that on New Hampshire or how far up are you? I, I'm having a hard time. We, we, from the light, we are literally like probably 30 feet. Like I mean up to the Graponi crosswalk. That would be 500 feet. So I would have to walk. That's pretty much what the state told me. Walk 500 feet. Cross, wait, cross, walk 500 feet back to, to just do my job. Just to, the other way? you're closer to the, the light. Yeah. And at first it sounded like they were going to flip it and you guys would have to maintain it. 
they would pay the bill. But and then he came back to me saying they won't pay the bill for that. That favors them, and I, I don't understand because it's their road, isn't it? Like. Yeah, but they don't. That's we deal with them all the time. In front of the they say if you want to pay for them, you can. Um, and then I asked, could they put a light at the across crosswalk at the light? And they said first yes, and then he came back with me and said no. Pretty much go down to your pony and cross. Um, they said it would be hard to put a light there because the on ramp for eighty nines right there for to cross. So we'd have to walk across the on ramp. To 89. Well, we'll put it on the agenda. Hey, for thanks for coming up. Yeah. Uh, David, could you get a. Um, I think uh, the, the train tracks also is kind of dangerous there, and Mac tractor trailers turn and left there, don't have enough room. And a lot of times the cars stopped at the light have to back up to let the tractor trailers go. And this is at least once a week. And that's only me sitting there for half an hour before my shift starts. So since you're here speaking on behalf of Pitco, I'm not here on behalf of Pitco. I'm not allowed to speak on behalf of Pitco. I asked them to come here. I asked the state to come here, and nobody showed up. I assume. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah, and we'll put it on the agenda. Could you ask um, him to opine on uh, whether or not it would be a, a working uh, crosswalk if it were at the light? I, I can't picture is enough space to safely have like a. Uh, an area there, and uh, we can talk about that for you. Yeah. Ask who? Just yeah. Because we've dealt with this at the school with you know, trying to put a crossword. Remember, when we, we, I don't know, we tried to put a crossword from the fucking uh, way across, and that required rejiggering the corner and making sure you had the right ramp. And so I just I don't know that that could even be. You know, like you guys said, that they're supposedly moving to Concord, but that's not set in ground. They haven't broke or, or started the construction yet. I've done construction for 10 years before this, and it's at least three to five years before we're moving in there at the least amount of time. And traffic on Route 3A is not getting less. No. It is getting more. And at first, I have I have many stories of almost I've been hit, and I waited for traffic to stop on both ends and they have and in the middle of crossing somebody goes around a stop car to try to turn left there and there's it's just really not safe and i think it should be immediately addressed and i think you could should get started right away and get contacted with the state and see what they can do i asked them to do a head count and they said i don't have i can't authorize or ask that they said the town of bo has to ask for that traffic help. Traffic count or, or how many people walk? How many people walk in across? Because, or, you, or both. Because he said if at least 20 people are crossing there a day, it needs a crosswalk. And there's more than 20 in our shifts, five o'clock in the morning until midnight. I get out at midnight and sometimes I park across the road and I have to cross and there's no lights. There's no, there's one very dim light and there's no signs or any warning or anything. And well, we get a lot of out-of-staters and even Canadians and and even our new employees don't speak English that well or don't know our customs. And I, I can't explain enough how important this Thank is for me, our safety. Let's our attention, Nick, and we'll put it on the agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Put it on the agenda for our next meeting. I'll be and your next meeting's uh, July the 11th. Yeah. So you guys will be talking about that if I come. Put it on the agenda. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's like some good news, Bob. Patient. Always good news. Hey, Jeff, you were miracle work with our <laughs> I wish I could take credit. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I twist a few arms. Um, so Why the ambulance revenues are up. I'm taking the fifth on that. Um, so, uh, I guess, um, the board was wondering, um, before the end of the year, if they could have a, an update and expectations of, of how we might end the year. Uh, so I put together a, a report for the, the end of May and projections through the end of the year. Um, and as you can see, uh, revenues are, are just through the roof. Um, 
uh, two hundred and twenty-five dollar, two hundred and twenty-five thousand more in in motor vehicle revenues uh, than last year so far, um, and then interest rates have gone through the roof. Um, probably got about three hundred thousand dollars more than we did the prior year. Um, for May, our our earning our yield was five point two seven percent. They're so good to us. Uh, we, still, we still have Merrimack County. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> the municipal program is just yep. amazing. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. Anything, obviously, with all this good information, there's not a lot to beat you up on. Anything we should be doing in the next three weeks to kind of plan for year end? Is there some capital things that we should get wrapped up or money we should commit? Um. I, you know, I don't think so. I think the departments have pretty much um, spent what they needed to spend. Uh, there's one thing, uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but um, towards the end of the budget uh, cycle, um, Community Action had sent a letter uh, uh, actually in January requesting some funds for next year's budget. And we decided it was a little late in the uh, cycle for that. But if we had money at the end of the year, that we would. Um, um, hmm? What did they ask for? Yeah, it's on page. Uh, they're asking for forty-two hundred dollars. Uh, somebody want to make that motion, or I'm going to make it. I'll make a motion that we fund the forty-two hundred and forty-two hundred dollars to the Merrimack County Community Action Program. This is something that we've always included in our budget. Always gotten a letter from them prior to the budget process so that we consider that as a, a charitable or a community. A giving this is offsetting a budget service that you get from the town. Um, Sorry. Second. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Bring down the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Jeff, can you send the check, remind them of when our budget cycle is? I'm going to do that. Yes. I have a quick question for you. Certainly. Um, the, but maybe it's not quick. Oh. <laughs> the recreation revolving fund. Yes. Um, do we charge them or do you charge that um, cost uh, for benefits? Or administrative costs, mm -hmm. or yes, we do. Yes, okay. all of the you know, like Darcy salary, and, and even even the recreation salaries. Melinda and and uh, Michelle, who aren't directly involved in the um, born after school program, um, all of their salaries and benefits are being um, charged to the revolving fund. And that's so. not just part of our budget process. It through probably five years, yes. we transitioned it. And so as we as the program became more self-sustaining, right. we moved more and more of the budget to the self-sustaining. Right. Uh, and then at post uh, Bo or REC, um, that was a non-issue. So yeah. they, they were able to completely self-sustain. Mm -hmm. But you also charge for administrative costs uh, as well. Like, do you bill them for no, like for payroll services or yeah. no, no. Would it be minimal amounts that you could build? Yes. It, it's not worth doing the paperwork. I, I, I mean, it's it, it may be 10, 15 minutes of data entry and a few extra pieces of paper because most of the, um, almost nobody gets a paper check. There's a few over there probably that might. Um, and then most of the check stubs are just emailed out. And there's one program you push the button and it doesn't care if there's five or 50 and it just sends them out. So there's really no significant cost um, for that. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Jake. Thanks, man. Uh, Welcome. Yeah, it's been great. You know, we haven't seen you a lot lately, but um, I always know that we're good hands and we keep us in the loop. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll make a motion to approve the percentage. No, no, no. Oh, yes, second. Then Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Motion passed. 
Before we go to the town manager's report, I have a, I got a request from Selectwoman Colby to address the board. So I would like her to do that now. Second. Um, Tanya, I did write this up. So I, I type it up. So I'm going to give you a copy. Oh, thank so you. I'm just trying to be very yeah. methodical about how I go about this. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes tonight um, to address an issue. Uh, and I mentioned this because on the agenda is uh, the topic of natural spaces management subcommittee charge, mm -hmm. um, affectionately referred to as a beaver dam subcommittee. Uh, it's the citizen should be able to say uh, that trust and integrity are two traits that are synonymous with their elected officials. As members of the select board, we are tasked to make informed and ethical decisions each time we meet. As the conversations evolved during the last work session, uh, it became a bit more evident that a serious discussion and possible vote will be taking place in the near future regarding methods of pond restoration located on town parcel 4-444. Due to the proximity of a family member's property to this parcel, and to, the, to avoid the appearance of any impropriety, I will be recusing myself from discussions and subsequent votes uh, directly relating to the pond restoration on town parcel 4-444. This recusal is solely for the topic of pond restoration or water retaining activities on the aforementioned parcel. I'd like to urge other members of the select board to review the town code of ethics as a refresher uh, to garner a better understanding of how each rule may relate to you individually, your family members, professional or personal relationships. It can be difficult at times to navigate life and friendships as a hyper-local official, and perhaps you may find the opportunity of your own to avoid any appearance of impropriety and preserve the public trust. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's move on to yes. the town manager's report. Uh, municipal project, uh, parking lot project design. Chris and Tim Sweeney and I met with an engineer. We walked around outside, looked at you know our concerns with drainage, traffic flow, uh, the problems we're having with the building foundation with, uh, with water. So they're now developing various options for the board to take a look at um, and, and decide what you want to end up doing out there. Uh, Solar Generation RFP, the Energy Conservation Committee, they're developing an RFP I met with uh, Jessica to uh, look at a, a draft that they had uh, to do potential solar projects on the old landfill and maybe possibly some town uh, buildings. Uh, asbestos removal of the municipal building. Uh, the proposals are due June 26. And then I do have some additional that are not there. Um, for the municipal building, we received uh, a rebate from Unitil, about $1,600 rebate for the uh, mini splits that were put into the uh, community development uh, office. And uh, Rec Center, there's a bunch of new things. Big flurry of activity if you've been by there. I, I gave you guys the heads up that the playground equipment that was going to not be here till September is, is coming in a week or two. So they've started site work. Uh, the new elevator is scheduled to be installed on 614. So if you remember, I think we were waiting for, I guess, the supplies um, and the, the elevator itself. And lo and behold, the generator we ordered about a year ago is scheduled to be installed on 622. So, a lot, got a lot going. Uh, open position community development, Carrie and Tanya uh, conducted interviews. I think we're getting close, so you're getting close to recommending a, a candidate to me. Um, and the last that I have is we received today a letter from, and I'll make copies for you guys or put it in late. Basically uh, from the Rotary Club, uh, they have completed the new pavilion at Hanson Field on Alvin Road. Um, they are currently in the process of either acquiring or building picnic tables. 
uh, through another rotary project and working on a sign that'll be attached at the east gable end. Uh, this signage was approved by the board. And so they said if there's a ceremony with pictures, if it's appropriate, they invite everybody to come along. So um, yeah, it's great. I don't know if anybody had a chance to, to look at it. And it happened and I know Cobb Hill assisted and did a great job. And you know, it's a good, great gift from the Rotary to the citizens and visitors. That's my review. Thank you, David. Discussion action item. Acceptance of the May 23rd meeting minutes. Motion to approve those minutes, May 23rd, 2023. Second. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. 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 And motion passed. Um, were down. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I we just going to ask the other question. Before we get to the meeting, do we know when um, we have a meeting with DES? Is that in schedule? No, that has been scheduled. Mike and I talked about that. Today. It has not. So we'll get it. Not been scheduled it not. Yet. Yes. Well, Eddie was out on. Friday and Monday. It's on the list. We're going to line it up. Yeah, it's on the list. Thank you. 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 The select board asked to have it on the agenda because it wasn't, there was some discussion last time, but it was kind of one to think about it more. I mean, that was my understanding. Uh, it's, well, I think. I think that there were, I mean, there was, you know, um, a concern raised about one of the, um, bullet items in terms of the um, kind of the things to address was something that you felt was um, more closely aligned with the actual Conservation Commission. And, you know, that's fine. Um, I think that was the um, third item, uh, the third bullet in the mission statement. Is this the exact same mission statement? Yeah, I did not resubmit a new one. Yeah, it just wasn't approved or... It, it, there was... No it, it was, yeah, there was no vote taken. It, it, it wasn't... I, I had understood that you all wanted more time to think about it. That was my understanding. Okay. So, uh, uh, well, I, number one, my recollection of the meeting, uh, there was no talk about restoration of the that that would need for your charge. Your charge was to put together a plan that would address future occurrences of uh, situations. So is this from the recording? I, I didn't go back. I think people were, I think the thought was that folks are going to go back and look at the recording to confirm what the direction was. All I did, Andy, was pull the minutes of that meeting. Oh, okay. Uh, I did not have to go back and listen to the recordings. Okay, because sometimes the... I think my, my hope was that this was going to be a very narrow a group that when we had requests to modify the beaver dams or if you address beaver dams and a variety of things, that we would seek uh, input from this subcommittee. And so not that it was a global natural uh, spaces committee, but literally a beaver dam committee, that the first and the third bulletin would be removed entirely, um, that any reference to natural resources management would be replaced with beaver dam subcommittee. Uh, and be a very narrow and targeted right. subcommittee so that if ever club came to us and said, we'd like to install a receiver, we'd like to move debris, Move again, that we would stop. We would request input. I don't think we, we need a subcommittee pressure, but this is to memorialize we're going to do that, and also that we're going to then bring the community. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. 
of the charge. Well, so, uh, yeah, I think, but Kevin, um, the last time, I think Kevin had uh, said he had foreseen it as not being a a subcommittee that would continue on forever. I mean, he, he you know, and and clearly with the review of Beaver Dam related issues, that would be an ongoing responsibility. So I think there's kind of some differences in interpretation. I mean, I think that we need to set up a process and um, we are going through that. I think it'll probably be between the, you know, public works and the conservation commission um, in terms of reviewing. And, and I think it's not only a club, you know, when a club comes, but I think the town itself in addressing these things it needs to look at, gee, do we need to put in a beaver flow device here? This has been a problem. Uh, you know, that's why, um, you know, I, I toured around some of the sites with Tim Sweeney a couple of weeks ago. And actually last night um, we decided which site we kind of picked a first and second choice site that when the, um, uh, get the uh, Sultan on board, um, we'll say, okay, well, this is our first choice site. Is this, you know, does this, none of the sites were kind of screaming for it needs to be fixed immediately. They were all at a kind of a good water level, which I, I mean, you can still install it at that level and say, okay, that's a good level. We want to keep it there. Um, um, and have you taken pictures of all? Yeah. These dams? Yep. Okay. So. Or, or, or all the sites. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the one on Clinton Street, I have to go back and take a photo. I, I did. I ended up not having a photo of that one. But yeah, I actually put a PowerPoint together on last night. I reviewed it with the Conservation Commission. Um, so we had a meeting, a work session meeting that invited the abutters of this parcel in, and there was a lot of discussion about what is going to happen to the area that had previously been referred to as the beaver pond that once had water but now does not. Um, I know there was an issue with the word restoration. If this mission statement is amended to um, say recommendations for the town or property rather than restoration mm -hmm. to kind of make sure that this subcommittee is a part of the process um, that we, you know, are taking into account as we discuss with DES the future for the next area. If we took out that word restoration, would it be more well, appealing to? Hopefully, we'll never have to go through this again. Yes. And Sandy's uh, recommendations for a plan will hopefully help us not to go through this again. Yes. Yes. yes, no, so, I'm trying I mean, to get the, an approved charge, and I'm just yeah. wondering if that might make it uh, more palatable more palatable <laughs> for this board to vote for approving a charge for them so that they can move I, I have uh, some semantics that I'm happy to make in motion, but it's, it's much, much more than that. Okay. So my, my recommendation, my motion is that we uh, modify the uh, Conservation Commission's uh, Beaver Dam Subcommittee mission statement, one on the Beaver Dam uh, subcommittee, uh, that in the purpose of the Beaver Dam, the first sentence is the same, purpose of the Beaver Dam subcommittee is to research and develop recommendations and set proposals to address the following issue. The entire first bulletin is removed, and the second bulletin stays and ends at Beaver Dam management period. The rest of that is removed. Third bulletin is removed. Uh, fourth and fifth lines stay as they are. So, am I understanding it correctly? That, that, that's your mo motion. Oh, okay. and sorry, Angela, I want to make sure that, that was a full motion. Oh. That was gonna, it's just describing what you might intend a future motion. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. 
And I didn't mean to interrupt. We can discuss it. I guess, uh, yeah, if you could, so so read what it would say. I, I don't have a hard copy with me. I just, I ended up not having it. It will replace the word natural space with the Hebrew Can I write on this? Yes. Location. In the purpose, we remove proposal to recommendations. Entire first bulletin is sh struck. The second bulletin, which is how to improve the town's approach to beavers and beaver dam management, period. Uh, the rest of that sentence is struck. Third bullet is struck. Subcommittee sentence stays the same, and as part of the mission, stays the same. Okay. And, and then the other question is. Um, there are still issues. It's not necessarily Beaver Dam, but things on town property and how they get reviewed. Yeah, I think I think we were working on better um, coordinating that, but that is not about the Beaver Dam. Right now. Okay. Okay. Well, it's it's no, this group is narrow, but the fact is that the the whole it's part of a big the bigger yeah. issue. I just want to make sure I'm understanding um, this completely. So, if I could just get it out here, <laughs> this committee is charged with developing a process for the town to improve their approach to beavers and beaver dam management. Uh, well, they don't I know that the process, they don't have recommendations. A recommendation yeah. for the process to improve the town's approach to be there. So, okay. And that is for the parcel that we have been discussing and additional. Or oh. oh, any. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're. Yeah. So it is not necessarily super narrow, it is broad. No, it's broad. Super broad, but there's no. But it's limited to saying, beaver. I'm not saying we're not saying develop a pro proposal to restore, or we're not saying that beaver dams mitigate unwanted. I love the powers that I've taken. Um, is there a place in this mission statement or charge to have something to the effect of this subcommittee will be involved in? Discussions regarding town on property lot 4444 with DES. I'm, I'm trying to look mm -hmm. for a way to ensure that this committee um, is included in the meeting that we have with DES and that we take into account what they. I really think. The conversation that we're going to have with DES in the coming weeks is whether we have a subcommittee or not. Is what we stand as a part of what it's going to The neighbors are part of that. Uh, this is for me. This is let's not let this happen again. Exactly. Let's establish that we're going to rely. Honestly, I don't really need this. I think we just need to rely on conservation commission better. This piece of paper on this subcommittee is making it clear to everybody that we intend to do that and that we empower people to do that. And to slow us down. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, you know, so the gets a notice about What's that. Will you come to the meeting with DES? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just schedule a time that I can make. So do you want this a standing committee or just develop that, bring it's it back? It's a study committee. It's a committee of the conservation yeah. Does it go away after they develop the plan? I think I think they they have, those people who care about these issues are there one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the, the thing is that you've limited the charge to improving the approach. And if they provide recommendations and the approach is adopted, you know. Then that's done. Then it's done. Yeah. So it's it's. But I think 
if it, if we were ever at a point where we had another question or another novel problem, we may reinvent it. Ask the well, we, would, we would go to the conservation commission, and the conservation commission would reach out to if yeah. to these subcommittee members if they needed additional insight for mm -hmm. this specific area. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think I, I don't think the, my edits take away anything from what they could do. So I'm trying to make sure. I don't think I'm putting them, but I'm also not saying, you know, what we talked about the night before the panel was the same. And that's what I'm limiting it to so that it, so that there isn't creep, but ultimately that's they're not limited to what they can bring to us. Recommend proposals related to beaver and beaver dam management. Pretty broad. Yeah. So since I haven't recused myself from discussion on subcommittees, um, the process improvements for managing future requests to perform work on town owned land, that being used for recreational purposes. And I, that was born out of um, understanding where the communication breakdown occurred uh, with the scope of work document. Uh, not being um, utilized or, or understanding exactly what the scope of work was going to be at that time. That's why that statement is in there because it, it was stated to uh, people in attendance that that could absolutely fall under this. Would you suggest then, Chris, that that type of document be handled by the Conservation Commission directly? I, uh, I don't know who has authority. But it could be the conservation commission. It could be um, the forests. It could be. It could be anybody, depending on what land we're talking about in town. Well, well, but the but part of the issue is, um, and and where the conservation commission is is working on a you know providing a list or making sure that the select board knows where we have management authority. You know, um, Eric French came in and you know talked about, as some of you have, oh, the process we've done over the past several years. Well, clearly there's been ignoring that we manage the town forest. So you don't have to have an easement for us to have the Conservation Commission to have some responsibility there. Um, so there are conservation easements as well that the, that the commission holds and, and what hasn't been consulted on in the past. I mean, Clearly, people are starting to hear things now, but the fact is that, you know, it's not just the Snowmobile Club or whatever. You know, we've had an ongoing discussion or, you know, communication with Bow Open Spaces. We have a trail work request form that they complete and they provide information that we then use to check in the field and, and see if what their request is. I, you know, is adequate. And it's not, you know, putting in water bars or anything. It's really more, um, you know, creating a new trail or, or certain things like that. See that list. See it. Put it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think that if there is recommendations on how we do that, it shouldn't be the B Committee. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, so any additional discussion on this topic. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion. Is this one extension? No, I'm, I don't have to recuse okay. myself from voting on like right. a so research meeting about the either. Either. So we'll make a motion we accept the Lincoln Court's uh, road. One second now. Thank you. Yes, I uh, need to sign off on something. Yes, no, we need, uh, Carrie and I took a look and actually one part of the process that I overlooked there was that there has to be a public hearing. So the, well, let's do this. We're all good up to now. I think in the past we've done it without one, but Carrie said, let's do it. And we have to do one for Evolution Drive anyway. So we'll put the two together for July. I'll rescind that motion until we have a public meeting. I don't think we've done that. 
Don't raise your eyebrows about it. Yeah, we've gotten a letter that says engineers good and, and the board just goes, okay. okay. We are training. We are training. Yes. Process improvements. Okay, set dates for the next agenda item, set dates for annual meeting committee, missions and board chairs, employee and volunteer appreciation events. Wow. Um, you want to speak that, David? Um, and Tony, if you could help me with the employee and volunteer appreciation events. That's usually in September and it's one night and we do both back we do to the back. day and night. Not back, back to back, but yeah. one night. And so, it's usually the second week in September on a Thursday. Uh, can you get the next spot to cook? Family. Uh, I certainly ask. Why, why don't we try that first? Make sure we have the room. Okay. And then we'll send out meeting advice to hold our schedule. So September 14th. Yes, if that's the, the, the second Thursday in September, yes. Okay. Elaine, have you ever done this with us as no. a volunteer? So we hold a lunch during the day, men's club cooks, hot dogs, hamburgers, sausages, and we give some awards and recognize people that have been here for about 10 40 years. Um, and then a few years ago, it was somebody's great idea to do it. The, all the volunteers the same day, so we only had set up cooking once and food once. And so that night, Bob um, Coffee does the same thing again. All the volunteers and their families come out. Um, there's a copious amount of sausage subs and um, a lot of food. It's not a good day for a guy. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. We try to all get there and help out in some way. Thanks, Tony. Okay. And how about the annual meeting of all the boards, committees, and commissions? So that one you also do in September. So I don't know if you you usually do it a night of a meeting. So I don't know if you want to do it like we're doing now. Start the meeting at five. Have the the commission committee chairs and board chairs and vice chairs. Did I we talked. I thought we talked about bringing these people in periodically so that every four instead of instead of I mean what. Yes, we did in fact talk about that, but it was talked about it and having people come in. We thought it would take too much time to forward in, take too much time. So we all agreed that we would review the minutes of the of the committees and commissions. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, one night, one Tuesday night in September. Yeah. So one right is now? part of the regular meeting, just start the meeting earlier. How long is it going to take us to get through? Well, usually, I thought, I thought it was like an hour last time. Yeah. So five minutes times a dozen for now? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. So five. five Reader's five. Digest condensed version. I'm going to do the 26th. Thank you. Can you remind me then that I promise I'll buy the team stuff to pizza and we'll eat while I'm eating lunch. Oh. So September 26th. 26th. Okay. Got that Sandy Mark done. <laughs> yes, I am. All right, you're going to be especially. Yeah, and the, the other one's more important. That was September 14th. Uh, number five, we've already taken care of. Number six, voter checklist policy. David? Yeah, and I thought we'd address this. We we're going to put a sign up in the town clerk's office. It says do not remove the building. Yeah, we're going to put it thought. Yeah. And it, it's in it's in there. We just need to sign. I thought we'd address that. I think it's just a... so. What was that? David, do we need to do a a read out? Okay. Proposed community power committee. Thank yes, you. Carrie Mackinnon will be presenting on behalf of the committee. <laughs> Good evening. Um, the energy committee members were not able to attend this evening due to some conflicts. So I agreed. Carrie Mackinnon. Sorry, Carrie Mackinnon, oh, yeah. community development director for everyone on Zoom. <laughs> um, so I'm here on behalf of the energy committee. I'm not a member of the committee, um, but um, they weren't able to attend and I have some familiarity with their work. So um, I agreed to present on their behalf. Um, so the Energy Committee has been looking into the possibility of establishing a community power committee in the town of Bow. Um, I'll give you the, the very brief 
Reader's Digest version of what is community power. Um, it is um, enabled by RSA 53E, and it allows um, towns and cities to establish their own locally controlled electricity provider. Um, so that's um, what provides the actual energy supply um, and replaces the energy supply charge that's on your utility bill. You're still a customer of your regular utility who continues to provide the transmission and delivery of the electricity. Um, so it allows you to aggregate all the customers within, within the community, um, all the residents and, and businesses that purchase energy electricity, and we purchase as a group instead, um, getting a, a better price for everyone. And also um, the community has more control over the energy sources um, and how, how we get that power. Um, so the first step in the process is to establish this committee that will then be able to do all of the research on the benefits and the ins and outs of what community power could do. Um, and begin creating a community power plan. Um, but tonight they are just requesting that very first step of establishing the committee so they can get started on all of that research. Um, and you may ask, why don't we just, we already have an energy committee. Um, they felt that, well, first of all, they have a lot of priorities. You heard they're working on their solar RFP. They're working on looking at uh, making our buildings more, um, more sustainable. They're looking at lots of different projects. And so they wanted a dedicated group that can focus just on community power because that is a big undertaking. Um, and they also felt that there was a wider breadth of people who might be interested in community power than just the people who are focused on the energy committee. Um, business owners might be interested in find, being able to purchase um, less expensive electricity, People that might not be interested in energy committee as a whole might be interested in community power. So they wanted to open it up and try to get um, a wider group of, of folks on that committee. Um, so you're asking for a motion for left uh, in panel a community power committee? Yes. Take that motion. Okay. For the discussion. And I'll bring back details on setup for the I'll, I'll work with Carrie and uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, they had recommended. This model, though. Absolutely. There's a lot of our neighboring communities are doing this right now as well. So. Opposed in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Now you probably want to get out of the ball here. She again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right to the law. Guys, are rocking those out. One day turnaround. It's pretty impressive. I'm truly today. Yeah. WMG. Yeah, same. Um, w is Wayne. Mike Wayne. It's he had three requests that day. So this is how I'm distinguishing them based on what the request was. Um, McCann is M, and Brennan is B. Um. I think uh, going forward, let's create a mechanism that is people's initial. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It was going to be Yeah. Yeah. Let's just have them and uh, next time say it's three people. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have asked. I didn't know. I know. I mean, it was for me because it was just the easiest way because he had three. Anything you need from us on outstanding projects, David? Uh, no. No. Uh, Angela had a project. I don't know, kind of flowing together about requests. Uh, right to know. So oh, for right to know requests. Yeah. Could you address that, David? Um, yeah. So we, um, right now, we have the right to know policy in the code. It doesn't specify that from, you know, depending on who it comes from, that it goes to town council. What we do is the process is in there. We'll get the we'll get it. Some are very straightforward. Most are. Some are way too broad, and we've learned to be able to get people to specify. And then there's a third category where Tony will come and just say, "Is this one Eric should look at?" So then we send it to Eric, 
Um, we get the answer. Ty and I talk about it with Eric. He usually do a pretty good, like you saw. It's pretty thorough when he uh, gets rolling. Uh, so it's not really part of the, and, you know, talking with Eric, you know, he, he sees it as working, uh, you know, and it, it works that way. But if the board wants to put some sort of caveat on there, if it comes from an attorney's office that we can send it to them, we just need to tell them what, why or what do we want you to look at. You know, and that's what we do now when we do send things to them. But if we need some direction for them other than, you know, we're sending it to them, take a look. You know, I don't know if we want to pine on it or that's where we're at. I'm you. sorry, David. We need direction for whom? Eric. For Eric, if we if we send everything to him that has an attorney's letterhead on, oh. what do we want him to look at? Oh, okay. Um, I my view is that you and Tanya do a lot of these all the time, and that you know when it's appropriate to go to legal counsel or not, and whether it's coming from an attorney or it's coming from a citizen, and if warrants inquiry, you ask for inquiry. I agree with that. I don't think we should treat requesters differently based on where their where their degree came from. I think there's can be a little extra caution um, if a request is coming from an attorney's office, um, but. I mean, we had this discussion at the last meeting, and the most important thing was that if a select board member asks for something, that that select board member's request is fulfilled and respected. I think that was the crux of that specific issue. I think there is an opportunity for town council to review a right to know request that comes from attorney letterhead to ensure that fulfilling that request um, as appropriate um, is not going to put the town in some kind of legal consequence territory. Um, I, I didn't think it was a request. Well, it is we, that we need yeah. to change the policy to do that. I thought that was a simple thing to just have them take a look at it. And that was the idea. Um, if no, I, I think this is a lot of David and companies. Apologies, very important. It needs to go to the meetings or the minister. They have a lot more experience in this area than the. the well, you're right, Dan. So there's a part A with the right. To right. There's still the part B of what's the policy for contacting the attorney? Is it an individual direction to me? Is it the board? Is it up to someone else to decide? And you have to have that order. I mean, we have right. to have some sort of order. It's not uncommon, again, to go through the chair. Now, some of these, if it affects you personally, that's, again, a different, if we're concerned with it affecting people personally. That's a whole different thing. That's our recovered liability coverage from the town for your position. Um, I think the direction from this board has not changed in all the time I've been here, which is the chair, vice chair, and you contact legal counsel. But I think I think um, what uh, select woman Brennan mentioned was, you know, figuring out the process, David, that if a select person goes to you or to right. Mike and I, that there's an expectation that they'll hear. Um, and that, that, you know, whether right. any of the others that are making that call 
They, they may choose for one reason to go to you, or if they want to ask a question about you, they may go to me. And so whoever gets that call from any of our colleagues has a duty to respond absolutely quickly. And I think having that expectation uh, provides, should provide anybody else um, the clarity they want. Um, I will mention, it, it, when I sent some information over to Eric, you are revealing quite a bit of information to get an answer. And I'm not so sure. Thankfully, I'm in a position where I go, well, Mike's not going to take this and run around with it. Chris isn't going to take this and run around well, with it. Well, you should expect that from every member. That doesn't here, necessarily here. mean that that's the case. Well, so I, I do think there might be an argument or a place where someone could say, hey, Mike or, or chair or device chair, do you mind getting me in touch with the attorney? I'm about to share some yeah, I don't, involved information yeah, financially. Ultimately, I think if you're providing a, your disclosures as part of a right to know request that is subject to any of you, there's no reason to go to once No, we, that's there. I'm talking specifically having a, so, to contact the attorney yeah. through me, you, or David. So when I wanted to ask so, a question and, about recusal, yeah. right, I, oh, oh, oh. I had to create a document, which I then had to share with another person that then shared it with the attorney. You shared that. With there, was a, there was a middle party involved. And, and, I, and, and I completely trust who I'm working with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the case for everyone. Well, it better be the case for everyone if it isn't. We'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't. And I also don't think that all of the conversation. Just to be clear, when I say that the contact is initiated from one of the vice chair, chair, or David, that doesn't mean all the conversation has to go through them. And so I think okay. if you said to me, I I have some confidential information and I want to get advice, I think one of those space calls is all all the plan. I think that's where. Um, the clarity is needed. Yeah. Is that if a member has a question that they need to ask the town attorney, that they don't have to ask that question to the chair or vice chair or town manager, that the question of can I speak to the town attorney goes to the chair, vice chair, or town manager. And then that contact, that select board member is put in contact with the town attorney. Okay, so well, I, I think if, if that's super specific. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he has no obligation to keep that private. I mean, he works for the town. Yeah, I'm just trying to go on where, as far as policy goes and who can speak to the attorney. I guess, I guess I'm really confused. I've been here almost six years. I was told we don't contact the attorney directly. We do it through our chair, number one or two. You're a public elected official. I'm sorry, you're subject to public scrutiny. It's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. Yeah. No, I know, but yeah. I, I just- I'm trying to resolve this issue. I'm trying to do, I, right, but we keep, this two meetings now, we're yeah. an issue that I think the policy is already there. It's already set. Work through your chair. If it is something else, if, then if, if it were I, and I got a call from one of you, and you told me that I have a highly confidential issue that I need to talk with Eric about, I would probably say yes. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, yeah. I, I, and that's fabulous for this board, but that doesn't mean that everyone feels like they are in the same position, you know, next election cycle, let's yeah, say. But I think that policy, the kind of chair vice chair David policy, can be changed by any board. It was, you know, it was a policy that was adopted because we were trying to control two. One, somebody saying, like, I talked to legal counsel, dot, 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 dot. Yeah. And also, they charge by the hour. So to manage the charge by the hour. Um, and it's hopefully it's worked pretty yeah. well. Um, I almost never call, and it hasn't been a big issue. I think let's just play it by ear with the understanding that that's the policy. And if you ask somebody to get in contact, you should expect 
Yes. Quick turnaround. And that I think is really important. Yeah, I think that's the answer. Matter, really. What, the quick turnaround? Yeah. The, yeah well, the, just a response. Just a response. That's all. That's the, I think, like, what there was, there was a, there there was a fact months. a month ago where they thought an inquiry had been requested and they didn't hear back. And so they waited for response and they, and so we were setting the expectation that we don't need to get it. Okay. I think I know what issue you're talking about. If one of us asks, if somebody on this board asks you to make a call, make a call and close the Oh, absolutely. I agree. I, Okay. Outstanding projects. Yep, we're good with those. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, coronavirus state and local physical recovery fund. Same thing. We're status quo with that for now. Um, now, I had a, something in the package here from Monica. I don't see that. Either. I think she's telling us uh, our assessments are way off, but yeah, no matter so what, we're doing assessment in 24, so she doesn't need a okay. commission because it's the last okay. year that there's anything. Um, okay. But yeah. I think yeah. the yeah. residents that are listening to this, uh, according to Monica, we're about 35% below market uh, value. Yes. Market value. Yes. Yes. So when that assessment happens, then we're going to see some pretty significant increases in our values, mm -hmm. hopefully with an offset of our tax rate. Uh, yep. Or at least in part, I'll say every time. Um, Selectman, board, commission, and committee reports. Oh, number six, and Monica was number six. Um, that's kind of jumped. Sorry. My apologies. Selectman, board, commissions, and on committee that, reports. On that point, Tony, it's been nice getting the, the minutes. So to read those, oh. I just read yeah. the minutes now. I'll uh, okay. have to repeat ourselves tonight, but. We didn't have a BDC meeting. I got canceled, but uh, so Pete, going forward, do you want that bullet removed? Uh, I I think we can address that in, in bottom lines if we have them. Okay. But yeah, I would remove it now that we're getting the minutes. It, that's been really helpful. Okay. Okay. And the uh, and getting mail to our inbox is helpful too. Getting what? Getting, getting the mail. mail. We've been getting scanned mail of late. Mm -hmm. Uh, it used to be back in the day, there was a folder on this table, a red folder, where mail would go and, and look through it. Uh, but just scanning all the mail to us as an attachment is way easier. So, okay, so do you want me to take off the correspondence part? Because um, it was a recommendation to kind of itemize what. Uh, no, I think. Yeah. Because this will force us to have a conversation about that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's, all, it's in your mail folder, but yeah. I just it. I like it. I, the mail is helpful. Yeah. So we're gonna we'll keep it as is. Remove the selectman board commission committee reports. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we've talked about Monica letter already. And then correspondence. Is there any questions about the correspondence? Do we have a copy of the correspondence in the packet? No, right? No. It's They're in the right folder. It's, it's oh, right. right here on the table, but because we had a presentation, I just moved it. But it's always right up here, and your most current mail is always on the top, and then it gets purged every month or so. Um, all right. Moving to bottom line. Later. Heritage Commission, uh, paint work is done, carpet cleaning is next. The carriage shed project is moving forward. Um, they're in the gathering of estimates stage, uh, and they're also on board for a possible Facebook page to increase community engagement and outreach. So I will sit with Tanya on that. <laughs> um, and thank you to the Bow Fire Department for spraying our children uh, at Bow Elementary School for the close of field day on Monday. My car seats are still drying. <laughs> Thank you, the kids. Matt, um, just uh, always nice to see the flags up across town. Uh, thanks to the Bow Men's Club for hopefully the bunch of you that are listening. Um, that money that we generate from there goes to scholarships. This year we gave five fifteen hundred dollars scholarships. Um, so if you don't do the flags program, by all means, please do. It's forty bucks a year, and it, it helps our kids in our community uh, with college costs. Um, so I always get people to ask and we seem to have people every week, um, but 
I think there's three more holidays left than after Flag Day, which is tomorrow. Um, the uh, always want to make, take an opportunity to thank our both PD and both fire department um, because they are they've been through a lot over the last couple of months and they are always been really good to this community. So always take an opportunity to just thank them for what they do. And I didn't know they splashed the kids. I didn't see in another community they did, but I didn't know they did it in ours. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, first, I just want to take a quick second and thank Eric for being our photographer oh, tour and everything coming out. Um, I had a second one and it just like, <laughs> uh, I reserve the right to go back. Thank you, Mike. Uh, congratulations to the class of 2023. And congratulations to all of our students and families who wrapped up another successful school year. Best of luck for a wonderful summer. 16th is the last day, right? Mm -hmm. This week, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, at our last meeting, I overlooked a fire. And a thank you for the Route 3A incident. And uh, the young girls uh, suicide. Uh, they were involved in that. I neglected to thank them for that. Uh, Memorial Day, thanks to all the organizations who supported the celebration. It was a great turnout. Everybody ate well and uh, it was a good time. Uh, I'd like, like to also thank all the thanks to the town departments and outside organizations who supported the town of Bow in the plant protest, which happened on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to bet. It's uh, first when I stay in two weeks, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a truck event is coming up at the library, 17th, 12th fun. Uh, thanks to departments for uh, participating in that. David's already uh, talked about the Lobillion completion at Hanson Park. And thanks to Eric. Photos once again. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, I also, I, I think PowerPoint was one I forgot. Uh, uh, congratulations to just on uh, his retirement. His retirement. Uh, and also, I think this is the second full year of our full rec program, second full school year. Uh, all around great reviews from everybody. Uh, they've been dynamic and uh, you know, kind of good on their feet and great program there for pretty long. So, uh, I really thank you for Motion. Do we need a non public session tonight? I know we discussed it. But yes. I can't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, oh, litigation. litigation. Yes. yes, litigation. Yes. The motion to move in the nighting on I say three. Uh, the moment to move two. Out. Bell. Bell. Um, it's operation. Can I come down to me if that was your motion? Uh, I'll say.